Thank you, Simon, for the opportunity to uh, speak and also sponsor. Uh, I, it feels like Florida right here. This is great weather. Love it. So um, I've been given the distinction of the longest title uh, for the sessions this morning, but it, it, it really does describe what we want to talk about here. Uh, let's figure out what the right systems are to drive a membership-driven organization. What do they want, and what can, what can you do to, to make that organization happen? So um, the question really is, what do your members want? And I'm going to assume that you ask them uh, in your annual meetings, you get feedback from events and, and surveys and things. Some of the things that our clients say that their members want are the following, and I'll just let those get up there. We'll discuss these a little bit, and there could be many more things, I'm sure. If these are the things that your members want, um, how do you get them to them? How can you improve your communication and, and give them more relevant benefits and, and more flexible pricing models? Another way to find out what your membership wants is to look at their behavior. And that's what a good system is going to allow you to do. It may be the case that you've got lots of systems in your, in your organization, and to get that information is difficult, and we'll, we'll address that. So how do they behave? What are they doing to um, purchase products, and what sort of things do they, do they, how do they interact with you? Do they, are they an active member who, who gets on your, your um, community page and participates a lot? Do they show up at your events? You know a lot of things about your members. I'm starting to list them here based on what you have in your systems. A lot of information that can help you figure out what it is they want. How do they behave? How do they participate? So let's give some examples here. Um, let's say you've got print and online content, right? So online content that you publish and you still have some print, but you've noticed that um, in the third year of membership, many of your members drop their subscription to print and they just want the online access. So why not make that one of the offerings? Just an example. And that's the kind of information you can glean out of that system that tracks the behavior. Another example, just to, just to keep this going, uh, relevant products. You'll discover that most of the student members don't read your e-tox that you send out. They don't click on the email. They never click on that link. So um, remove it as a benefit and offer something else. Sounds like very simple kind of you know, logic, but this is the kind of analysis that can be performed on your system to drag out what people want. Third example, um, everybody who purchased product A, which could be an e-book or a journal subscription, also expressed interest in it attending a conference or attending a webinar. So why not make that a package? But of course you need a system that's gonna allow that to happen. So let's talk about that a little bit. Analyze and deliver in one system. What, what if you could have one system that does all of that? A system that manages your members and a system that manages what they purchase. So their subscriptions, their, their online content um, subscriptions, their downloads, their pay-per-views, um, consortia deals. All of that in one system. Let's think about that for a minute because most, I bet, most people in this room have two, at least two systems. One to manage that content subscription stuff and another to manage the membership. So let's talk about these benefits of having a single system that would do both of those. Analysis would be easier. Probably a marketer to figure out what sort of new products and packages to offer has to go into multiple systems to, to query what it is that people are doing. So, um, how, you know, you have to, you have to go look at the, the subscription systems to see what it is that they're renewing and, and what they're subscribed to, and you have to go over here to the membership system to see what kind of level of membership they have and how long they've been a member. And doing these queries across multiple systems is difficult. Doing them in one system that has all that information really is much easier. 
you can query all that information and save that query for future use or tweak it a little and make another query. This is what our clients do all the time. Being able to set up the offer for a new package or some sort of new deal and have that also replicated or, or done in one, in one action in your backend systems saves you a ton of time. So instead of having to go to the web team to make that offer available on your website and then going to the back end people to say, oh, by the way, here's the new offer and, and people are going to be buying this new package, tie these products together, why not set it up in one place where both the offer and the back end are all done in one action? Another benefit, improved member service. A number of years ago, I had, um, in the U.S., we have uh, providers of, you know, your internet and your cable TV and your, your landline, if you have such a thing, all in one. And uh, we wanted to switch providers because the price had been going up and going up and going up. So we canceled with our existing provider and signed up with the new provider. And the existing provider, uh, we returned the equipment to them and they continued to bill us for two or three months afterwards and we kept calling and saying, we've canceled, we've returned our equipment, why are you still billing us? And probably four hours of phone calls later, they finally got the idea that we had canceled. But it's because they had eight systems that a customer service agent had to log into in the morning and they had no way to tie all that information together and see one 360 view of my behavior. So. In the end, uh, it, very painfully, they, um, we ended up paying them more than we should have, but in, in the end, we canceled. Now let's move to my favorite uh, customer service people to call, which is American Express. I've had an American Express credit card for a long, long time, and when I call them and say, I'm going to X country, uh, can you please put a note on my credit card so that I don't get any charges denied because the system doesn't think it's stolen, um, it's fantastic. It all takes about 30 seconds. They have access to all my information. They're friendly. They're delightful. They don't put me on hold. How many of you enjoy going on hold when you're talking to customer service? Well, member service can be just like that for you. Um, why not give your member service agents access to all the information um, in one place? It reduces the time that's needed to find the information. It, no, the, the member doesn't have to go on hold or wait for a callback, worse yet. Um, and they, you can give them the power to actually perform actions. So if somebody calls to change their address, many of our clients are then able to take that phone call and turn it into an upsell. Oh, did you know that for just this amount more, we could give you this extra benefit? So give them power. Empower them to, to upsell, to change membership levels, to handle payment claims change details, all that, all that good stuff. So vastly improved member service when it's in one system. And then member self-service is improved. Um, why not reduce your costs and let your members pay their dues, check their balances, claim their benefits, check their educational credits and track those, change their physical address or email address, all at your, sorry, all at your membership portal. Okay, some cautions about all this. Two things. First of all, proliferation of systems. Many of our clients have, a, have gone through the experience of uh, different parts of their organization purchasing subscriptions to systems because it's, it's, this is going to solve all our problems. So one of, my, one of our clients in the U.S., a very large prestigious organization, the CIO sat down with us and said, I have marketers who, who go to their management and say, we need this new system. It's going to solve all of our problems if we just have this little application. And they use it for two or three months, and it doesn't solve all their problems, so they stop using it, but they continue to pay for it. It's still a budget line. And the CIO finds that there are hundreds of systems across his organization unsupported by his people and costing money and not in use. So be careful. Proliferation of systems is very easy to do. I have to watch out for it myself. I'm a marketer and we're always looking at, oh, well, if we had this little tool, it would help us to do this, help with communication or whatever that may be. 
The other is something we call flocking. And flocking is um, there's this new tool out there. It's great. Everyone says it's great. Everyone's using it. Let's go and use it. Instead of finding out what it actually delivers, and maybe it doesn't actually meet all your needs. Um, we've had clients go off, flock to some new solution, only to flock back, or unflock, back to us and say, oh, that, that, that other system really didn't do what we needed it to do. Does your system do that? And we say, well, yes. And we were trying to tell you that when you were in the midst of your flocking. So be careful. There are many uh, systems that promise things that they can't actually deliver. And I can tell you the horror stories down at stand number 11 if you want to come and ask. So how to shop, how to go find a system that would do everything that you need it to do. You need to find a few things. First priority is flexibility. When you're looking for a system like a, a membership system or a subscription system, you need it to be flexible because you have no idea what your pricing model may be in five years' time. You want to have a system that allows that sort of future, it's future-proofed, it's architected in such a way that can be easily changed and adapted to a very quickly changing world. And certainly your membership sort of activities and, and benefits and levels are evolving over time, right? So make sure whatever you get is flexible. The second first priority, these are all priority one, is openness. In today's world, you've got to have a system that's open enough to talk to other systems. Yes, you don't want to proliferate systems, but you will have multiple systems which need to talk to each other. And so our system, we've had to uh, build about 200 interfaces to other systems. That's the way it is today. But you need to play well and easily with these others. We need to play well and easily with other systems, so we need to be very open. So make sure you're not buying something that sort of is you know, its own proprietary language and doesn't talk well. At the moment, we're working with a, an organization in the US uh, which is, uh, is working with another vendor, another application, which we need to interface with. And this application is incredibly closed. It doesn't have an open API. We can't just reach in there and get information or send it information. We have to build something here that will sort of push its way in. So be careful. Make sure your systems are open. And the last first priority is you want a long-term partner. Uh, these systems are very traumatic to change. Those of you who have been through system changes know. I see a nodding head back there. Probably just finished changing systems, major systems. Oh, another nodding head. Touching on a sore point here. And when you change these systems, you want that change to, to, to stop when the project is over. And you want to be able to have a long-term partnership with your system supplier. Make sure your supplier understands your business. Make sure they're going to be around in five years, 10 years. At the moment, our oldest client, is, we've had them for 31 years. And that's, they're not on an old version of our software. We've had them for 31 years, and they've been upgrading all along and keeping up to date. So make sure your partners can do that. So that's a, a bit about how to shop. So Advantage CS, just a, a plug for who we are and what we do. We're downstairs. Please come and visit us. Um, what we have is a management solution for membership organizations as well as a publishing management solution all in one. So it's a single member record. And what you see on that member record is everything about their membership and everything about what they've purchased. If that sounds interesting to you, please come and see me. Thank you very much for your attention. OK, thanks very much, Dan. Um, what we're going to do is take just a couple of questions after each speaker in this particular track, and then uh, look at a panel discussion um, at the end as well. So uh, if there are any questions for Dan, please um, raise your hand. And uh, I think there's a, a, a microphone available. I'm hoping there's a microphone available. If not, then shout. Um, and please do also say your affiliation before asking a question, if that's OK. Any questions out there? No, not yet, anyway. I have one, however, of course. <laughs> you don't get away that easily. Um, one of the things that um, is, is quite apparent as you work with societies around the world, of course, is there are lots and lots of societies and overlapping subject spaces. 
Um, and quite often they also collaborate in sales. Um, uh, you know, there are collaborations between societies in, in uh, say, Canada and Australia who aren't sort of ever going to get in each other's way on the membership front, but want to cross-sell each other's products. I don't know if you've actually looked at or whether there are any sort of networks of societies that you've worked with to try and enable that cross-selling? Do you have any experiences of that going on? We have had uh, discussions with our clients. Uh, some of our clients are really competing head-on in the same space. I can think of a couple of medical um, societies in the U.S. that are doing that very thing. But uh, we have had discussions about that, and we've got the capability, capability in the software to do that. We're just looking for the right partners to come along and say, okay, we sort of complement each other. We would like to do that very thing. So we've it's got quite, the capability. It's quite difficult, I guess, because you've got, on the one hand, um, uh, the sort of the membership side, probably where they really don't want to share data at all, or right. maybe exactly. rather wary, and yet on the subscription side, perhaps quite happy to cross-sell. So yes. must be a, a tricky thing to manage. It's, it's tricky, but uh, if you've got the products that can be um, mixed together in a package, you can keep the membership separate. Right. So we would, we would put it together that way. Okay, that's great. Uh, are there any other questions for Dan? No? Not at the moment. Well, thanks very much, Dan, and uh, thanks again.